All right. And for anyone who didn't know, it's in Japan. I took a trip to Japan um, last summer. Last, last summer, sorry. Last summer, I took a trip to my home. But uh, yeah. And uh, that's where in the world. And so just a few announcements coming up. Uh, hope the last lab uh, was not that bad and hope this lab is uh, similarly easy. Uh, we're hoping this lecture and this lab are just uh, gonna be pretty chill. And if you haven't submitted any of your labs for this quarter yet, uh, we really want to encourage you to submit them because you actually need them all to complete DAV uh, in the spring. And of course, you know, we're always welcome. We're always uh, willing to help you with anything. And uh, other stuff, just uh, continue to work with your groups, stay hydrated, and there's a couple of events coming up. Uh, if you're interested in becoming the next DAV lead, for example, and replacing us, or becoming any officer, you should come to the officer speed dating uh, info session next Thursday, March 4th, and the officers will all be there and tell you a little bit about their positions and how you can uh, run for, for officer. And the next GB takeover is IDOL, IDOL this Saturday at 7 p.m. And it's a singing takeover. And if you go, you get to have the privilege of uh, hearing El Presidente himself uh, serenade you. So hopefully we'll see you there. And uh, now moving on. Uh, so this lecture is gonna be about graphical output but first we should definitely, uh, we should definitely uh, talk about uh, why we care so much about this topic and why it's so important. Uh, well, you know, back in the old days, we actually used telegraphs to communicate. And these telegraphs machines, they use Morse code, of course, uh, with dots and dashes. Uh, but it turns out being evolved from monkeys, uh, humans don't actually have that much fun uh, looking at dots and dashes all day to communicate. We actually prefer looking at pictures uh, instead. And there's actually a lot of examples of uh, really cool pictures that are fun to look at. And now we have a lot of appliances actually that uh, help us uh, see pretty pictures all the time, uh, like that monitor or this HDMI cable. And we also have a lot of peripherals uh, that are exclusively made uh, just for this exact purpose. Uh, but how do you use these appliances? Uh, well, for example, let's say one day you wake up and you're like, I really want to see uh, pretty pictures on a screen. So you go to your 27 inch LG 4K ultra high definition monitor, you put on your gaming headset with the cat ears and you plug in your RGB keyboard that lights up the whole dang room. And then you turn on Zoom because you have online university. But after a while, you know, your lectures aren't that engaging. So you decide to go on social media instead and see what your friends are up to. And after that, uh, you go on YouTube, and whether you're the type of person that likes watching uh, hydraulic press videos, or you like tuning into the lo-fi beats radio and just chilling, or you're a big nature fan and you like watching bonobos giving each other handshakes, uh, there's a question to be, to be asked, and that's how did the monitor uh, know how to display all these things instantly, just on the spot, on demand? And this is a really good question, and there's actually a lot of smart people who are working uh, you know, on answering, on solving this problem as we speak. And the way we're gonna do it is through the VGA cable, of course. And in this lecture, we're gonna learn exactly how the VGA cable sends signals to the monitor to tell it exactly what to display and uh, when to do it. And so if that's okay with everyone, uh, we're gonna move on and we're gonna get started. All right. Now, after that beautiful introduction from David, we're going to talk about our VGA monitors. And so, you know, seeing is believing. And so in our VGA monitors, you know, the underlying hardware is that there is an electron gun that basically focuses light at each individual pixel. So you might think your VGA monitor is like showing up, showing all the pixels at once. No, it's actually just really quickly iterating through all the pixels in one entire frame. And so our monitor's resolution is 640 by 480, which is uh, 307,200 pixels. And so, like I said, the electron gun just kind of runs through every pixel in order really quickly. And then 
um, after it reaches the end of the frame, it resets back to the top. And so it, par it parses through so quickly that your eyes just kind of picture it as one large picture. And so here's a little image that kind of, uh, you know, demonstrates that same idea. You know, we have this horizontal, wait, let me get the pointer. First, the electron gone, gun will go uh, sideways just across the screen, and then it'll move on to the next line and just repeat this over and over again until you hit the very end of the screen when it resets back to the top left. So control signals. Every VGA monitor needs some control signals for uh, your monitor to work. And so there's actually five of them, um, which are all represented in these two pictures. There's the red, green, and blue signals. There's also the H-sync and the V-sync, which stands for horizontal sync and vertical sync. So first, RGB signals, you know, you're probably used to this if you have like RGB lights or RGB keyboards. Um, basically, every light that you can represent can be made up of three independent channels of red, green, and blue. And so for our purposes, our, each color channel is four bits long. So if you have four bits, you can represent 16 colors for each channel. And so 16 times 16 times 16, are like 4,096 possible ranges of colors. And so the color of each pixel is typically dependent on the signal that you actually send it, which is basically what you make in your own application. And so you can send a specific value for each channel to get a different color um, based on what you want it to do. Next, there's horizontal sync. So remember, if you go back to this picture, right, the electron gun has to go across and then it resets. But it takes time to reset back to the to the entire left side of the screen. And so this is uh, there needs to be time to reset, which is called the blanking interval. And so the blanking interval has three components. It's called a front porch, a back porch, and a sync pulse. And so H sync is the signal you send during the sync pulse area of the blank interval, and it is active low. And basically it gives the beam time to move back to the left side of the screen. And then the front and back porch are used to kind of reset the reference voltage of the beam. And so you can kind of see that right here in this example. So we got all this period of time where um, we're sending RGB values, right? And you're getting all your different colors for all the different pixels. And then once you reach the end of the line uh, horizontally, you start this horizontal blanking interval where you aren't sending anything and you have a front porch and then after a few pixels, um, you, uh, you set your horizontal sync low. And then after that's done, you have your back porch. And then you go back to sending your signals. And so these, the amount of time that you are in this blanking interval is actually, depend, is actually uh, basically a hard value, depending on your monitor resolution. So for uh, 640 by 480 resolution, it'll be a specific amount of time. For another type of resolution, it'll be a specific amount of time. And we explain those in the spec, so you'll know exactly how long to set your intervals low. Same thing, there's a vertical sync, which kind of is the exact same idea, but just in the opposite direction. So once you've reached the end of the frame entirely, which is you've reached all the way to the bottom and all the way to the right, you need to reset your electron gun uh, to go back to the top. And so it has its own blanking interval, which is a different amount of time than the horizontal sync, but it does the exact same idea to move the electron gun back to the top and zero out the voltage. So you can kind of see that we have this horizontal sync just as before, but we also have a vertical sync. And so you can see that the timing is a little, a little bit different because it would take a different amount of time to reset the gun to the top. Are there any questions about the basic signals types that go into a VGA monitor? All right, so then um, if no questions, we're gonna move on to the timing component of VGA. Um, conventional wisdom says that timing is all opposite intuition, but in this case, it's not. And it's, you don't actually have any options of how to do timing. You have to do it this way. So make sure you know you don't do something different. And for our VGA, we count time in terms of uh, pixels, which is basically how long it takes to render a pixel on the screen. Uh, in our system, the pixel clock is about 25 megahertz. 
uh, which is uh, basically the frequency that you should uh, set your VGA module to. And so in one horizontal line, there are 640 active video pixels, uh, like literally on the screen. But uh, the front porch and the sync pulse and the back porch, they also, they all take time as well. Uh, so it, effectively, each horizontal line uh, is about 800 pixels long because uh, the blanking interval takes extra time. And similarly to the horizontal, uh, the vertical line uh, is effectively 525 pixels uh, long. So instead of the 640 by 480 uh, that the screen size is, uh, you should imagine that you're actually doing 800 by 525 pixels uh, worth of operations. So here's a, a graphic that kind of shows uh, what's happening here. The blue area is the actual screen. That's uh, the 640 by 480 pixels. Uh, but on either side, on all sides of the screen, you need extra time uh, because uh, you have, you know, the front porch, back porch, sync pulse, and, um, and, and yeah. And uh, you might be wondering why uh, the back porch is kind of before the drawing area and the front porch is after. And uh, that confused me too. And it's because of this, the back porch is the back of the blanking interval which uh, happens right before the start of the next frame. Uh, so that's why, you know, the, that's why it's arranged kind of uh, in this manner. And uh, now that you guys know about all of the uh, components of the signals and how they should be arranged, uh, the only thing really left is the pixel widths for each section. And you can find them on the data sheet or um, on some of the links we posted in the spec, or you can just Google them because uh, this is pretty, uh, fairly well-known knowledge at this point. VGA has uh, been around for a pretty long time. And uh, yeah, any questions about uh, the timing element of uh, using the VGA? All right, great. All right, with that being said, you know, we said it would be a nice short and sweet lecture. VGA has been around for a while, so uh, we kind of, there's kind of standard practice on how to do it. It's also a pretty simple protocol. Um, so next your uh, lab six will be a flappy bird on an FPGA and you're using the VGA monitor to display your game basically. And you know, this, mod, this lab is actually brought to you by President Brian Wong who designed this entire game. Um, so the v VGA module and display logic will be up to you, but we have a skeleton provided for you. So you can kind of get familiar with the ideas of how the VGA works. Um, the game logic and physics, however, are already there. So you don't need to do that unless you want to try it yourself. And then we'll um, try and we'll give you, I guess we can give you some stuff, some guidance in that direction if you want to try it yourself, but I would not suggest it. Uh, make sure you assign your pins right because your pin planner um, does have a specific uh, set of pins for the VGA cable output, um, which you will find in your data sheet because data, reading data sheets is important. Um, we got two checkpoints for it. Um, one's due Sunday week nine, which is basically the basic VGA code and then actually getting the VGA to look right and make FPG happy bird is uh, due Thursday of week 10. So. With that being said, short and sweet lecture today, guys. Um, if there's any questions, you know, go ahead, ask. Oh, uh, I have a question. <clears throat> um, could you go over again what the purpose of a front, the front porch and back porch is? Yeah, so let's go back to this. So you kind of have this, let's say, so, thinking about the horizontal sync alone, right? So in this like section denoted with the da dotted lines, that's when we start sending values for each one of our pixels. And then the front porch and the back porch and the horizontal sync are all in this blanking interval. And so the front porch is used to kind of start um, sending like zero values, kind of uh, set the reference voltage back for the gun. And then after you have your front porch, you reset, you actually horizontal sync, and then afterwards you uh, have your back porch, which still is mainly for 
voltage references. And then after you finish all this time, you go back to sending values. And this amount of time is um, basically a, a hard number for, for your screen resolution. So like David said here, if you have 640 on a horizontal line, you actually do 800 pixels to account for the blanking interval. If he, uh, what if he wanted to connect it to like a, a bigger monitor, like 1080 by, yeah, just bigger. Yeah, so it would be the same process. It would, you know, you, you send 1080, um, let's, let's say horizontally, you send 1080 uh, pixels of, of values, and then you, you still have your a uh, blanking interval, it'll just be a different amount of time because think about it as like the screen has more pixels to move across to reset. So it's based on your resolution. Oh, okay, I got you. Any other questions? We can stop recording now then. Is there no more questions? <laughs>